Last time we looked at the edit condition specifier for U properties. Here you basically can set up simple conditions that you also would use in an if statement to determine if a variable should be editable from within the editor. However, for more complex conditions you should override the canEditChange method. In this method you can also implement conditions to determine whether a variable can be changed or not but you are more flexible since you can use proper code structure. First, let's look at a simple example and take it step by step. Again, we have a Boolean variable that should determine if we can edit an integer variable. This time we want to be able to adjust the integer variable if the Boolean variable is false. So let's override the canEditChange method for this. The canEditChange method gets called for each U property of your class, which gets passed in as an argument to the method. Therefore, the first step is to determine which property was passed into your method. For that, we can use the getFName method of the property variable. Next, we want to check if the name of the inProperty variable is the same than of our integer property. For that, we have to convert the integer property to an f name. For that purpose, we can use the macro getMemberName checked. This macro needs the class in which our property resides and the property itself. So in our case, a custom actor and integer property. Now we have to compare this value we get from the macro getMemberName checked to the f name we got beforehand. Next, you can see that the canEditChange method returns a boolean. If the return value is true, then it means the variable can be adjusted from within the editor. If it falls, then it cannot be adjusted. Since we said we want to be able to adjust it when our boolean variable is false, we have to return not boolean toggle. This condition is true if the boolean toggle variable is false. And then we already have set up the condition for our integer variable. Obviously, we still have to return a value for our other properties. Since we have overridden the method, it makes sense to return the value of the parent function call. Since there might be a chance that the conditions for other properties are implemented already in there. However, if you want to implement further conditions on your own for other properties, then you can place them before the call of the super function and proceed like we did for our example. So basically first check if the current property is the target property and then provide the condition. For our example, as you can see, if we tick our Boolean property, we cannot edit our integer variable, but if we disable the Boolean property, we are again able to adjust the value of our integer variable. However, this was a pretty simple condition and could easily be implemented with the edit condition specifier. So let's say instead of the boolean variable, we have a t array that stores integers and now we say if the sum of the values inside the array is greater than 10, we can adjust the integer property. Compared to our previous condition, you can see that this condition is way more complex than just returning the value of a boolean. And as you can see, we can add values to our t-array inside the editor and as soon as their sum goes above 10, we are able to adjust the value of our integer variable. If we now remove the elements of the t-array, you can see we lose access to editing the integer variable again. So overall, you should remember that more complex conditions for editing variables should be placed in the can edit change method. First, you have to check if the current property that gets passed into the method is your target property for which you want to provide the condition. And then obviously provide the condition for it. Like always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Otherwise, see you next time.